Hi everyone, Alicia Zari here, and today we're going to be reviewing the concrete representational abstract approach when it comes to double digit multiplication. This is most appropriate for fourth grade, but it also could be an extension of third grade and definitely review for fifth grade um, students as well. Um, just to take a step back, just a reminder that the concrete are the manipulatives. Um, these, unfortunately, too often stay in our kindergarten classrooms and don't get pulled out in the upper grades, but there's so much research that tangible items and having this concrete uh, materials out are, are, helpful for, are helpful tools for supporting students' number sense. Um, the representation would be when we model it. Now, instead of a flat or a square, I know that when I draw a square, sorry, it looks more like a rectangle, this represents 100, this represents 20, and this represents three ones. And the abstract would just be this represents 123. So if students haven't used base 10 blocks very much, they might need to go back to this step just to remember how to use them. But today we're going to be looking at double digit multiplication. Our concrete is going to be using this um, this area here. This is from an Ames lesson called Area Codes. And unfortunately what happens is our book jumps straight to the representation. So students often don't get enough practice in getting the concrete modeling first. So if you've taught double digit multiplication, you've probably seen um, what looks something like this, an area model approach, which is a fantastic resource. Um, so that students aren't just solving with the shortcut method or the standard algorithm, which is the abstract. Um, but today we're gonna link these two, concrete and representational. Um, looking at my grid, I can count and see this is a 12 by 18. And typically with an area model, we would grid it off into tens and ones and it would look something like this. Students that understand area will start to make um, this jump, but what does it actually physically look like? Um, and that's what we're gonna go with today. When I have 12 by 18, it's gonna look something like this. Our 10 by 10 is coming as a hundreds flat, which is why we're getting 10 times 10 equals 100. Our box down here is a 2 by 10, and students can build it. They can confirm that it matches using something like this on um, centimeter grid paper or by pre-making these or finding a lesson such as this one move these away so we don't get confused. So we have 10 by 10 makes 100. 2 times 10 makes 20. Over here we now have this top grid. eight tens, so students that may not even have their math facts very well yet, or um, don't really understand powers of 10 with zeros, um, they can easily go back 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. They can confirm so all students have access. And then last but not least, this last spot is a two by eight. Most kids will not need to build it but maybe the first time that you're modeling, it's important for them to see this array. Um, this array is more common in third grade multiplication, but for students that still haven't mastered their facts, they'll need to see it. But by building these area codes using the concrete model, um, 
2 times 8 equals 16, they can see where those partial products are, which is an important strategy for the abstract. Before we ever go to standard algorithm, it's important for them to see these components. 100, 80, 20, 16, together it makes 216. If a student wasn't sure or needed to confirm, they can go back and check. Okay, I have 100, I have 200, I can even rearrange these. Two hundred sixteen, and so by building this we've now shown all three so we have the concrete the representational which is the area model and the abstract which is the calculations on the side. This also could be standard algorithm, but I wouldn't rush into it too quickly. Um, if you want to know more, watch Graham Fletcher's progressions um, video. And right here is this sweet spot. When all three are presented is when you meet your students um, where they are. Too often we only isolate and focus on one thing at a time in our math curriculum. But when students can do all of these at the same time, see the visual representation, build it if they need to, students that don't need to build it anymore can do this area model, but should be able to do this step, um, you'll find more success with your learner. So this is concrete representational abstract approach to double digit multiplication. Thanks for watching. If you want to find out more, feel free to reach out to me um, either on Twitter, AliciaZ143, or contact me, alicia.zari at sesd.org.